Hello, welcome to the 2011 through 2012 NFL regular season schedule week 17 picks. At 12 o'clock central time on Fox, it's Detroit at Green Bay. The Packers really have nothing to gain from this game other than trying to stay sharp for the playoffs. But that's hardly the case for their opponent, the, Detro the Detroit Lions. While garnering a, a better playoff seed should be enticing, though, the Lions will also be out to show the world that they belong in the NFL's upper crust. And a victory over the league's best team through the regular season would serve notice regardless of whether or not Green Bay doesn't use its full arsenal of players. It's hard to imagine the Packers coming close to hitting, hitting their season scoring average with Rodgers and a number of their main offensive cogs either inactive or having a reduced role, while Detroit won't find too much resistance in its quest for points, as long as Stafford can maintain his excellent recent form. Lions 28, Packers 17. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's Indianapolis at Jacksonville. Wishing the following a long goodbye, Indianapolis veterans such as Wayne Mathis and center Jeff Saturday are each in their final year of their respective contra contracts and may be playing their final game with the Colts, which could also serve as an intangible. Wayne caught the decisive pass in the final seconds of last week's 19-16 defeat versus Houston. Colts defensive end Dwight Freeney, the team's lone representative to the upcoming Pro Bowl, has nine career sacks against the Jaguars, and counterpart Robert Mathis has three sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery over the past two games. Mathis, who, who has eight and a half sacks, aims for a third straight game with the sack against Jacksonville, as well as needs another sack, one sack and a half to reach double digits for the fifth time in his career. Middle linebacker Pat Angerer has the team best 137 tackles along with a sack, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery in 15 games this year while Antoine Bethay has produced 129 tackles and two forced fumbles. In the team's two wins, Colts quarterback Dan Orlovsky has completed 34 of 58 passes for 326 yards with two touchdowns, zero interceptions, and, and an 85.8 .8 passer rating. He has a 95.0 rating in the fourth quarter as a starter in 2011 through 2012 as well. Adai had two rushing touchdowns in the Colts meeting with the Jaguars at Jacksonville, while backfield mate Donald Brown is averaging 7.3 yards per carry in the past two games, 27 attempts and 196 yards. Wide receiver Reggie Wayne needs 113 receiving yards to reach 1,000 for the eighth consecutive season. He had a game-winning touchdown catch against the Texans last week and has two scoring receptions in the Colts' past two games. Wayne has also compiled 1,599 career receiving yards against the Jaguars, his most against any opponent. Fellow wide receiver Pierre Garçon, who has 925 receiving yards, needs 75 receiving yards to reach 1,000 for the first time in his career and has six touchdowns this season. Tied for a career best set last year. Wide receiver Austin Colley had four touchdown receptions in his past four games against the Jaguars. I could go on and on and on, but I think you get my point. Colts 28, Jaguars 12. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's Tennessee at Houston. Houston's defense should get a spark with the return of Phillips after the league's second ranked unit. 280.7 yards per game allowed the Colts to post 320 yards of offense. The Texans are also tied for second in defending the pass with 184 yards per game and are fourth in points yielded per game at 17. Houston has already set a club record with 41 sacks this year, a number that was boosted by three in week 16. Linebacker Brian Cushing, who has 110 tackle, tackles, four sacks, and two interceptions, led the team with 12 tackles. Forced two fumbles and a sack while rookie defensive end J.J. Watt, who has 55 tackles and 5.5 and sacks, also got to the quarterback while making 5 tackles and linebacker Connor Barwin, who has 46 tackles and 11.5 and sacks, also came up with a sack. The offseason addition of established cornerback Jonathan Joseph, who has 44 tackles and 4 interceptions to the young Kareem Jackson, 37 tackles and 1 interception has paid off for the Texans as has the free agent signing of safety Daniel Manning, who has 55 tackles and two interceptions. 
Backup cornerback Bryce McCain, who has 26 tackles and two interceptions, had a big week at Indianapolis with seven tackles. And star linebacker DeMichael Ryans, who has 60 tackles, ended with five stops. As a team, Houston has posted 17 interceptions this season and will probably end the season with 20 over an unproven and aging Hasselback. Texans 32, Titans 17. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it's San Francisco at St. Louis. Many are fairly wondering just how much effort the 49ers will put into this game with an eye on a bigger prize down the road. After all, San Francisco can still get a wild card bye week even if they lose. However, the 49ers have showed a blue collar attitude all season long and it would be shocking if Harbaugh let his players take their feet off the gas, especially early on. That's bad news for a banged up and overmatched Rams team that took a big step this year and could see some big changes after this contest. 49ers 23, Rams 6. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's the New York Jets at Miami. Coaching up balls, a New Jersey native gets his third try at leading the Dolphins in the game situation. Though he's probably not considered a candidate for the full-time position, a one here could... Could make should or should make him go two and one with a strong performance against New England and a losing cost, and the Dolphins' performance hasn't dropped off since he took over. Dolphins outside linebacker Jason Taylor, who announced his retirement following this game, has 16 and a half career sacks against the Jets, and inside linebacker Carlos Stansby has two sacks in his past two outings against New York. Outside linebacker Cameron Wake, meanwhile, aims for a third consecutive game with a sack this week. Up front, defensive end Randy Starks has 32 tackles and 3.5 and sacks on the season. While in the backfield, cornerback Sean Smith has amassed 56 tackles and 2 interceptions. Doomsday has come. The Jets' offense will shoot themselves in the feet again. Dolphins 19, Jets 18. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it's Chicago at Minnesota. What looked like the start of something special just over a month ago has instead turned into a complete disaster for the Chicago Bears. While it's safe to say that injuries have derailed Chicago's season, the Minnesota Vikings can only hope a serious knee injury suffered by Adrian Peterson does not hinder them in 2012 through 2013. Chicago, who is 7 and 8, appeared headed for the playoffs after improving to 7 and 3 with a 31 to 21 over San Diego on November 20th but rather saw its season start to spiral downward that weekend. Jay Cutler suffered what proved to be a season-ending broken right thumb, and the Bears have since dropped five straight to drop out of the playoff race. Matt Forte's sprained right MCL in Week 13 certainly didn't make things any, either, any easier on Chicago, who finds themselves, themselves in the midst of its worst single-season skid since dropping eight straight from no Sub September 22nd through November 18th of 2002. Both Cutler and Forte were placed on injured reserve on Tuesday. Toby Girard posted the career best 109 rushing yards on 11 carries after re replacing Peterson last weekend and is expected to see the majority of the workload on Sunday. Rookie quarterback Christian Ponder, who has concussion like s s symptoms, was also forced from the victory, opening the door for the versatile Joe Webb. Love completed, completed 4 or 5 passes for 84 yards and 2 touchdowns to go along with 34 rushing yards and another score. Ponder passed concussion tests this week and Frazier said he remains the team's number one quarterback. But the coach certainly seemed intrigued by Webb's play on Sunday. As I look at the tape, Chicago in contrast has not received much of anything from its backup quarterbacks and after watching Caleb Haney compile a dreadful 41.8 quarterback rating over the previous four weeks, the Bears will continue to drown with veteran Josh McCown during last Sunday's 35-21 to loss at Green Bay. Good news, Vikings fans. We will not finish the season at 3-13, and and the last time that happened was when dumbass Les Stackle was coaching. He, he obviously had no idea on how to run his players, but Frazier does. Patience, my fellow Odins, patience. Vikings 27, Bears 20. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's Buffalo at New England. Though the Bills gave New England all they could handle and more back in September, don't expect a duplication of that outcome this week. A rash of injuries have rendered Buffalo a shell of its early season self, and the Patriots don't lose at home against non-contenders. 
In situations, I mean something. And with a chance to stay in their own backyard throughout the playoffs, this game does carry a great deal of importance for the Patriots. Buffalo's defense will be hard-pressed to prevent ba Brady and his cast of weapons from doing considerable damage, and it's hard to imagine the Bills' erratic offense matching New England on the scoreboard. Since there's the threat of Belichick pulling some regulars in the event the Patriots build a comfortable lead, Buffalo may have the opportunity to make the outcome respectable. But a team that has just managed one win since October going on the road against one of the league's elite and coming away with a victory just does not seem very plausible. Patriots 31, Bills 20. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it's Carolina at New Orleans. The Saints' dominance at home makes the second seed an important goal. With the third seed, the team would play at home in the wild card of the playoffs, but would certainly then have to win two road games to even reach the Super Bowl. As the second seed, however, the Saints would not play in the wild card and would then be guaranteed a home game in the divisional playoffs. If the Green Bay Packers were to lose, the Saints could possibly host the NFC Championship game. So, there is a lot on the line this weekend. Saints 27, Panthers 22. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it's Washington at Philadelphia. The city of brotherly love will be action-packed on New Year's Day with the annual Mummers Parade and the town's beloved Eagles taking on the rival Redskins in the season finale for both teams. There's only draft positioning at stake in this one, but the Eagles would like to finish with a .500 record by sweeping the season series over Washington. Vic, the Pro Bowl running back McCoy, and the Hawaii-bound Babin are three players to watch this weekend in what could be an easy victory for the Eagles. Washington is still picking up the pieces from a disastrous breakdown after a 3-1 start and will likely head home with more questions than answers. Eagles 30, Redskins 20. At 3.15 Central Time on CBS, it's Baltimore at Cincinnati. If the Bengals win, they are in the playoffs, while the Ravens are trying to win the AFC North, which they will do with a victory. Both teams have solid passing games led by quarterbacks Andy Dalton and Joe Flacco, and consistent running attacks headed up by running backs Ray Rice and Cedric Benson. Defensively, both teams have a ton of talent, but the Ravens have the edge there. An untimely turnover could be the deciding factor in this one. As for overall talent, I'd give Baltimore the nod even though the Bengals are playing at home. Ravens 21, Bengals 20. At 3.15 Central Time on CBS, it's Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Thus far this century, the Steelers and Browns have faced each other four times in either Week 16 or Week 17. Three times in Week 17, one time in Week 16. All four times in 2001, 2005, 2008, and the 2010 seasons, the Steelers have been playing for playoff seedings, and Cleveland has been playing just for pride. Final th scores of those games in this order. 28-7, 41-0, 31-0, and 41-9. That's some history right there, folks. And s since the Browns roster has turned over so many times in the last 10 years, there are way more Steelers that have experienced that history than Browns. The Steelers have clearly owned the Browns late in the season and they know it. If you play for Cleveland, the only hope for victory is that you weren't a part of that history and you could attempt to start a new chapter. Steelers 34, Browns 6. At 3.15 Central Time on Fox, it's Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Practice makes perfect, right? Well, the Falcons have to believe that Sunday's game against the Buccaneers will be the final preparation for the second season. Or they may have all sorts of problems trying to straighten their act out before the playoffs commence the following week. After getting their gongs run by the mallet that was the Breeze and the Saints, Atlanta has to come out swinging versus the Buccaneers despite the fact that this game may mean nothing to both teams. Tampa Bay, of course, is hoping to save the job for Morris and put to rest an elongated losing streak that has dashed their playoff hopes. That streak will sadly continue into the 2012-2013 through 2013 regular season, however, and continue to raise questions if Morris is suited to continue as head coach. Falcons 27, Buccaneers 17. At 3.15 Central Time on Fox, it's Seattle at Arizona. 
Both of these teams have found winning formulas over the past two months, but it's the Seahawks that have been more impressive in doing so. The defense has been sensational in forcing turnovers, which could be a real concern for Arizona considering John Skelton's tendencies. And Lynch's penchant for churning out hard yards has provided a real lift to an offense that's not prolific at throwing the football. The matchup seemed to favor Seattle as Arizona's pass-oriented approach plays to the Seahawks' strength on defense and the Cardinals have been the more mistake-prone of these two participants. In what should be a tight battle between NFC West rivals who don't offer much in the way of explosion, Seattle's ability to stop foes could prove to be the difference. Seahawks 20, Cardinals 13. At 3.15 Central Time on CBS, it's San Diego at Oakland. The Chargers are historically very, very good in December. The Raiders are a very talented team, but they aren't very consistent. To me, this game is just a toss-up, as is any game that involved the Chargers because you just never know which of their split personalities is going to show up. In my eyes, playing in the black hole seems to be a death-defying curse especially if you are an AFC West rival and if you are already out of the playoff race. Raiders 35, Chargers 13. At 3.15 Central Time on CBS, it's Kansas City at Denver. Tebow threw only eight passes the last time these two teams met, so it won't be going out on much of a limb to say he is expected to throw the ball more on Sunday. However, Denver will likely favor the ground game over the passing game as Tebow has proven to be an effective scrambler and McGahee is healthy. The Chiefs will play hard but don't expect Orton to throw deep as head coach Romeo Cornell has preferred a conservative approach. In the end, Denver wants this game more and they seem to have the Chiefs number at home. Broncos 24, Chiefs 14. And finally concluding... The 2011 through 2012 regular season schedule, it's Dallas at the New York Giants at 7.20 Central Time on Sunday Night Football on NBC. This will be another tight one. Expect the Giants offensive line to hold off the Cowboys defense, creating time for Manning to complete passes to Cruz, Nix, and perhaps even seldom used tight end Bear Pasco. Romo's injury won't be much of a factor as the Cowboys will run the ball often and Romo's passes won't be risky. However, if the Giants running game it however it will be the Giants running game that should be a difference maker. Expect a game a big game from either Jacobs or Bradshaw, and the major reason New York pulls off the tight victory. Giants thirty, Cowboys twenty eight. And that concludes week seventeen of my twenty eleven through twenty twelve NFL regular season schedule picks. Thanks for tuning in to a great regular season and stay tuned for the playoffs.